We're going to be talking about five misconceptions that people have about the stock market. And I'm going to be sharing with you why they are false. But first, if you're new to the channel and are interested in wealth building strategies such as stock market investing, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you find value in this video, smash that like button and leave a comment down below. Misconception number one, trading is for the rich and the powerful. Now, back in the day when my grandpa and my dad used to trade in stock and you know all that great stuff they had to call up their broker hey man i want to buy some stock in this company called apple broker well sir that's going to be a 20 to 30 dollar free how many do you want to buy say what on top of that it was hard to get the information about those companies because you didn't have something called the internet now welcome to 2019 we have the internet and thanks to Robin Hood and Charles Schwab, try and say that name 10 times fast, Charles Schwab, Charles Schwab, Charles Schwab, Charles Schwab, can't do it. We have commission-free trades, all right? Now, if you're still paying commission, I suggest looking into other brokerage companies or seeing if your brokerage company is about to drop theirs down to zero commission as well. But the point is, is we are at a major advantage now in trading because everything is so easily accessible to everyone. On top of that, why do you think the rich are rich? Well, they take their money. Do they leave it in a savings account? No, they take it and they invest it either A, into their company or B, into the stock market. Also, my personal story, I decided back in the day, I was going to school. I didn't have any money. I was like, hey, I want to start investing. How should I do this? Well, I took out a student loan for school I had $1,000 in my savings account and I took that $1,000 and I decided I was going to put it in the stock market and trade with it. Well, lo and behold, I put it into a company I felt really strongly about. It went up $33 eventually over a period of time and I had to sell out. Unfortunately, that company actually did really well in the long run. I kept an eye on it, but I still made $33 that I personally didn't have to go to work to earn. I did the research into the company and the company made me money. And that's the beauty of the stock market. Misconception number two, you need to be financially savvy to invest in the stock market. That's not true, all right? Yes, you need to understand basic principles in business and in finance and stuff, such as, is the company profitable? Are they increasing in sales year over year? Are they, do they have room for growth? Do they have a vision and what is their product? You need to be able to describe those things. What's their product? What is it that they're trying to do? Is it important? Can I see room for future other products that they would sell in the future? If you cannot describe their business model and explain it to another person, chances are you shouldn't be investing in that company. Always invest in companies that you understand. That way, you can easily figure out how good of a company they are and whether or not they're a good investment. You can look up news articles about those companies. You can look up analysts reports and analysts opinions about those companies. If you need to, you can call your broker and ask them information. Granted, brokers, yes, they do cost money, but it's better than investing in a stock that you don't understand. And if it is a good company, eventually that company will pay off fee of that broker. Misconception number three, the analyst is always right. They're 100% correct all the time. This is not true. Do not rely solely on analysts' opinions because they're looking at the numbers of the here and now or what's happened in the past. They're not focusing in on the future of that company majority of the time. All right. You, though, understand the business model of the company already, and you can visualize what's going to happen in the near future or the long term future even. And based on your opinion and based on your gut feelings from what those analysts are saying, you can have your opinion influence slightly just to critique your perspective or maybe even show you something that you did not see before. But in the end, your main perspective and what you're visualizing for that company and your opinion about the leaders of that company and all that other stuff that has to do with your research will determine and be the determining factor of whether or not the analyst is sort of right or extremely right. Misconception number four, the charts going down, it's gonna eventually pop up or the charts trending upwards so it's going to keep going. 
That is not the way you trade in the stock market, okay? If you were to do that, you are more likely to lose your money because you are gambling based off of what you are visualizing a chart to say. Know that these charts that you see are of the past. It's past performance. The past cannot predict the future. Now, it can give you an idea of the future, but it does not predict the future. In order to predict the future, you have to do the work. You have to look, and this is going to sound repetitive, look into the profitability of that company. Look at sales year over year. See if they are increasing in efficiency with the money that they're using to earn that money. You need to look and do your research in lawsuits that are going on in those companies. You need to see what's going on because on the, you may buy into one of these companies that's trailing downward that you're expecting to bounce back up. That company could be going bankrupt, all right? If it's trending upwards, yeah, it's probably trending upwards because people have visualized great things in the future for that company. But what if you see something that's wrong when you actually read their 10K or their 10Q? And then you're like, oh, people, people aren't seeing this. I'm going to stay away from this company. And then a couple of weeks or months or years later, it just drops off of the face of the map. All right. So always do your research. If you get anything from this video, do your research, because if you don't, you're going to really regret it. And this leads to our final misconception, misconception number five, which is the stock market is a place for quick cash. This is the wrong way to view the stock market. The stock market is for you to put money in, let it sit, let it grow, preferably for a year or longer, because if it's a year or longer, it's long-term capital gains, which means it's taxed less than short-term capital gains, which is around your income level. And so anything less than a year is short-term capital gains. Anything longer than a year is long-term capital gains. Keep in mind, the S&P 500 grows at around nine to 10% per year. Sometimes more, sometimes it loses money, but on average, it's around nine to 10%. You should expect somewhere around that, maybe a little less if you are new to the stock market, and maybe a little more if you are really experienced in the stock market. Now, warning, if you are into the put your money in and pull your money out, put your money in, pull your money out, expecting to make a profit, that's called a day trader. There is high risk involved in that. In fact, only around 10% of all day traders actually succeed in performing to earn money and make a living. On the other side, you have 90% that fail. They either A, lose money, or B, they don't make enough money to make it worth their time. Okay, that means here in Vegas, you have higher odds at rolling the dice or pulling that lever and making money than you do have at earning money as a day trader. So keep that in mind. Anyways, that is all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button and leave a comment down below if you have a question. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video.